but it gives seven points why we ought to support single number. Get this up here. Okay. All right, Southwest Florida, thanks for joining us again here on Lee Pitts Live. We are we're wrapping things up here, and we're so thrilled to get here in the park out here at uh, Mount Hermon Christian Church, a community fine day. We're switching over to some politics now, particularly the Lee County School District, and the fact that for over 130 years of the existence of the Lee County School District, there has never been a minority on the Lee County School Board. I repeat, 130 years of existence, there has never been a minority, ethnic minority, African American or Hispanic on the Lee County School Board. One of the movements that's afoot is the redistricting to allow for these types of opportunities to possibly occur. Not single member districting, we already have that in some form, redistricting. We gotta hear, uh, uh, African history uh, historian scholar as well as a educator a civil rights activist community activist the works Ladovic Kimmel to shed some light on a historical perspective of what we have going on here in Lee County Ladovic Kimmel welcome to Lee Pitts Live man thank you brother welcome to be here hey I think you feel at home being outside in the community than into some starchy studio don't you? always always tell me about how you first became what we would consider a community activist? Well, I came here in 1981 as a psychology professor. And one of the first things I did was volunteered for the pre-release center to help uh, young ex-offenders get jobs when they came out. Shoemaker at the time was running for city councilman and the NWCP had filed a lawsuit. That's Veronica against, Shoemaker people. Yeah, Veronica Shoemaker had filed a lawsuit against the city of Fort Myers with Abdul Abzib uh, because there had been no African-American representation on the city council. At that time, Shoemaker had run for office 15 times before she was elected to office, and she was the very first African-American to run for school board. Jerry Ware was second after that. The problem is not only with our school board, the problem is school board and county commission, because the Democratic Party in the 1950s, and although I'm a Democrat and very proud, Democrats in 1950 was something totally different, it was a group that I would not have been proud of. They were a, pro a, a group of racists who blatantly set out to set up a political system to keep minorities from being elected office. The Civil Rights Act of 1965 says a large election is illegal. Yet and though many counties in the state of Florida have implemented a large election and dared us to sue them. The NWCP sued the city of Fort Myers in 1980. Uh, David Lippman was a lawyer. They won that lawsuit and had to pay out $1.5 million of taxpayers' money. Since that time, we've had seven African Americans to represent us on city council. We've had none to represent us on the school board or county commission. But to date, we've had about 11 Africans and Latinos, two Latinos, to run for that position. The sad thing is that the majority of those who were Democrats who won, won their district, but lost the election because of a large election. Had there been single member, Jerry Ware, Sh Sheraton Chester, Sonia Page, they probably would have become... James Middlebrooks. James Middlebrooks, they would have become school board members. But for the black Republicans who ran, they neither won the districts nor won the county, nor got any support from their own party. Their party supported the white candidate who ran, did not support Charles Daly, did not support Dr. Donnell, did not support Lovey Wells, did not support Arnold Gibbs. None of those got any support. So they sold themselves out by not coming to the Democratic Party being supported by the community. Mm -hmm. They had a chance to win it, and right now we set a precedent. Yeah. Is Middlebrooks a Democrat? Uh, Middlebrooks a Democrat. Somewhere. Let's back up for a minute. Uh, and let's talk as though we, let's break this down in a Sesame Street way. You said uh, they uh, outlawed at large, right? Or uh, at large. Outlawed single member and implemented at large. Okay. Tell our listeners what is the problem with at large? Let me, if, if I can draw <laughs> yeah. a picture, imagine a box divided into four sections. Those four sections represent four parts of the county. Lehigh, Cape Coral, Fort Myers, South Fort Myers. You have candidates running for office in those areas. Normally, in a single member district election, only the people who live in that district can elect the candidate. What we have presently, People all over the county elect candidates for your <laughs> districts 
And yeah, often yeah. they put in office a candidate that the district did not support. Mm -hmm. So that candidate, aware that the district don't support him, spends his time campaigning in other three districts to get elected office. When he's in office, he spends his time uh, serving the will of those three districts to remain in office and never addresses the problems in the district that he represents. And that's what we would have when we have people like Tammy Hall, who represents the African-American community, who has done nothing to help the community grow. Mm -hmm. Now, the st system, based on your expert analysis, the system is inherently racist the way it's set up, or the people racist? In the the way system it's set is inherently racist the way it's set up. <laughs> the people perpetuate racism by not changing the system. All right, now. What is the process of changing the system? What has been done towards the end of getting the system changed? What we did first is what John F. Kennedy said. Never fear to negotiate, never negotiate out of fear. We've been negotiating for 30 years, trying to get them to change this and do the ethical thing and the right thing. They're not doing it now, so the NWCP is actually looking at the possibility of suing the school board or county commission if we don't bring about a change. The idea that a black person in particular could not get elected unless black people elect them in the 21st century we're in now 2017 we still have a situation where white people are not going to vote a black person into the school system well that depends i think the middlebrooks got a lot of support from the european american community and he did win his district so that means that had we had single member, Middlebrooks would have been on that school board. And so would have Jerry Ware and a number of others who ran. So essentially, is it impossible for a black person to get on the school board by the way the system is constituted right now? The way the system is set up now, I think a precedent has been set, and we have an attorney here who could validate that, when a number of people have run, have not been elected, win the district and still don't get it, the precedent has been set that you cannot be elected under at large as a minority. Okay, now that we have you here, a political guru who has studied this and been involved with this since you were the NAACP president, I think back in the 80s as mm -hmm. well. Tell us the ideal look of a system that would work. Describe that system. Well, one of the other things that people are not looking at is that Africans are not the only ones being affected by at large. European Americans are too. When I first Hispanic. came here, Hispanics too, when I first came here, you had two cities. You had Santa Bell and you had Fort Myers. Uh, Fort Myers Beach was not a city. Bonita was not a city. Uh, Estero was not a city. Lehigh wasn't trying to be a city. What has happened in those municipalities, those individuals feel like they have not got representation from the school board or county commission. So what have they done? They have broken away and started little cities in this larger cities Greeting a, a better uh, uh, financial base because you got to have a mayor in every city, police, fire department in every city, as opposed to doing what Miami did where they became a metropolitan. We should be headed toward a metropolitan city like Miami, like Nashville. We have one county, you have one county mayor, but you have different municipalities and you have people who represent those municipalities. That's not what's happening under at large. Okay, now, the, what is this importance I want you to draw on your psychology background as well. What is the importance of having certain images that look like the students that they serve in those high places like the Lee County School Board? The number one cause of voter apathy is not having is taxation without representation. When even in a school board, a job at a school district, when you work in a school and none of your teachers look like you, none of your administrators look like you, how do you aspire that you can have more or be like them? What you are actually, the message is, being, is saying to you is that you need to assimilate, not accommodate. Assimilation is not necessary. We're African people. We have a right to maintain our culture and our social values and stuff within the system. We are a country of immigrants. And it's time that America opens its eyes and realizes that every American citizen should have a right to participate in the political process. Plus, when we have a diverse group, people of different ethnic and cultural groups, people of different genders and sex and so forth working for the common cause, we come up with some type of consensus that we can all agree with. You work in the school district, you worked in higher education, you worked in elementary, middle, you went all over the gambit of things. And you're still in, in the education system now. Why would a person like you, 
who work in the system still feel comfortable, unapologetic by speaking out against the system. Why aren't you just taking your check and being quiet? Because I'm an American citizen and I have a right to my voice and I have a right to my political views and those political views should not affect my ability to do my job effectively. And anybody who tries to stop that have stepped outside their bounds and kept me for doing my right and my right to free speech. And that's why we need more people like you who can educate the people and understand these types of things. Now, the importance of getting out the vote, we still have a lot of apathy in our community. Yes. That is a factor as well in yes. terms of if everybody would get out and vote, we could still make some significant impact. What's your response to that before I get to Cedric Hall? Well, you understand that part of the problem is that since slavery, which a lot of young people, I've been dealing with them lately saying we don't want to talk about slavery and not deal with that. If you don't know where you've been, you sure don't know where you're going. Slavery ended for 11 years before I was born in 1942. When slavery was supposed to have ended in 1965, it continued until 1942. Read a book called Slavery by Another Name, and you realize that they weren't interested until Europeans got caught up in what they call sharecropping. And it's the same thing with everything. They weren't interested in drugs in the black community until Europeans got caught up in it. They're not interested in black folks being shot on the street until now they're shooting Latino, Asians, and just last week an Australian white female. Now we're realizing the problem is greater than just us. Mm -hmm. Now you said slavery was supposed to end in 1965, but I would say it was supposed to end in 1865. And oh, then all of, that's right, hold on, that's right. Let, let, right. let me feel smart for a second. Thank I know you. I know you know, what, uh, you. but I'm you gonna get a chance to seem like I know what I'm talking that's about. Right. Cause I'm up here with this scholar. That's right. Okay, so we know in, in, in 1865, after the Civil War, this, uh, you know, and so on, slavery was a free slave. And then uh, Martin Luther King dramatized that fact 100 years later, yep. 1965, which is what you were talking about, right. ending the Jim Crow era and the whole thing. That's now right. pick up right there, go back, Come forward for me, my friend. Well, you got to understand that when Lincoln signed emancipation in 1863, that was supposed to bring an end to slavery. End of slavery, no states had succeeded for the Union, but it continued. And Europeans ran to French and Spanish territory and tried to establish slavery. That's why we had to battle the Alamo. So the United States actually went down there and actually, in 1865, brought an end to slavery, which created Juneteenth. On June 19th, we celebrate the end. But what continued to happen? A hundred years black later, black men were being picked up on the street, forced to work in plantations, factories, camps, chain gangs. They did not get a trial by jury. They did not have a, 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 a jury of their own peers. And then sharecropping came along. So whites who were poor got caught up in that. Was another form of slavery. It was Eleanor Roosevelt who read about a white male being killed here in Florida and said to Roosevelt, "You must bring an end to that." 1942, I was born in 1953, 11 years before I was born. And as I said, you can read about this in a book called Slavery by Another Name. And one of the things in that book, too, that I've read, and I still have it in my bathroom, I read when I'm doing stuff in the bathroom, <laughs> folks. I just get that reading in. And it, it, it dealt a great deal with where I'm from in Birmingham, Alabama, yep. what Ladovic is talking about. We can't go into it right there. That's another interview about the coal mines and the factories that they put those black people in, uh, arrested them on the street and a part of their prison sentences. They worked and built this country, and they were doing it even during the free period in those coal mines yes, and sir. dying in yes, those sir. mines and those factories in Birmingham, those steel mines that I grew up all around. And when I was reading the book, I'm like, hey, that's right across the street from where I grew up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, before we wrap this up, I keep on saying before we wrap this up, um, the come here local for a minute and talk about Fort Myers. Did Fort Myers get passed by in a lot of progress that was made in the state of Florida uh, during the desegregation era? Uh, it, it, you know, the, the fact that Fort Myers in particular still has a problem with uh, county commission, Lee County School District, just key decision making parts of this whole area still being controlled by by what you call uh, European Americans. I call them white, he call them European You American. come from Alabama, <laughs> me from Tennessee. I bet you came here with cultural shock. <laughs> that folks still had the track mentality. <laughs> that you're not supposed to go across the track. You had folks telling you not to go to LaBelle cause the clock stopped there where they hung the last black man. This is the kind of things you're hearing about <laughs> Fort Myers. And then you see where there's little progress Politically for blacks here, you realize that we're way behind times. And then it was later when the NAACP brought a lawsuit against the school board to actually busing. They had gerrymandered busing for many years to actually force them to do busing. 
Then you have to talk about Ida Baker, who went all the way to Tallahassee to complain about that there was no black leadership in public school system and we needed black principals. That opened the door for Charles Daly and Albert Daniels and others to get those jobs. All right, so those who are looking at this on television, listening to this on the radio, and you're saying, well, we never get this kind of information uh, explained to us like that, like Ladovi Kimball is doing, Professor Kimball. That's because you have to tune in to Lee Pitts Live on the radio and on television to get this kind of information. In a minute, we're going to bring Cedric Hall up here, a local attorney, to tell us about some other things that are happening here as it relates to our health and uh, what we should do going forward with uh, uh, Donald Trump as the President of the United States. All that's happening on Lee Pitts Live. Thanks for joining us, Ladovic. Thank you for inviting me. We'll be right back.